This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this is the show where we talk to people in and around uh, uh, independent professional wrestling. I have a lot of great conversations with people over the years here. Of course, you can check out all the past interviews at IndieWrestling.us. In a lot of cases, a lot of people we talk to on the show are represented there as well, and I, I encourage you to support them in any way you can. And also over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can drop us a line uh, over at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. If you have any questions for any of the scheduled guests we have coming up, please check the Facebook events pages for Indie Wrestling and Wrestling Mayhem Show to see who is coming up. Uh, or if you have any suggestions for people that we should be uh, chatting with on the show, we definitely have had people on, and actually these guys have been recommended to me several times over the years and we've been trying to get them here in the studio in pittsburgh but they're cleveland guys so they don't really like our town too much but we'll get into all that uh but we do have on the line with us some guys that have been uh, making some noise whether it be here locally with rise wrestling or up in cleveland with aiw uh we got we got a crew with us today uh we have derek direction and dr daniel rockingham with us today Yes, sir. How are you? You are the second doctor I've talked to this evening. Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Who was the first? Who was the first? Um, Dr. Matthew White in Erie. He does game design. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm sure you I, see. That, that, that's not a human doctor. So, I mean. Eh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you see him at the mixers, you know. So. Dave uh, was a doctologist. No, I'm a psychologist. <laughs> psychologist. A minor on water basket weaving. All right. Come on. Uh, you know, everybody's got to get through and get their credits, right? Uh, but anyways, so you guys, uh, uh, you know, we do a little of a icebreaker here on the show here uh, for maybe people that don't know you yet. Um, so what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Me? Go first. Uh, honestly, I remember, like, watching a little bit in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s with my cousins. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't start watching it till. Eddie Guerrero won the WWE title. Like watching that SmackDown where he first had the title was like the first actual like wrestling memory I have. That's awesome. Well, I'm you really weird. I'm really weird. And so when I was young, my dad used to take me to all the like Cleveland Indies. So like I'm an only child, so that's how I bonded with my dad through like professional wrestling. And it led me to this point right now in my life. <laughs> so you just grew up in the game? student of the game <laughs> so how did you guys go from uh, and, and, and Derek I think it's probably going to be obvious for you but like how did you go from uh, watching it being fans of it uh, at what point did you say hey I want to get in the ring and do this thing um, I remember I used to go to all the AIW shows when I was a child and it was just to the point where I was like I want to train so I asked John Thorne and Chandler Biggins mm -hmm. where I could train and they didn't have a school so they sort of directed me to Jeff Traxler from Mega Wrestling. And I remember hitting up Traxler and um, he told me to come to this like, this like uh, old beat down YMCA and I had a tryout and now I'm here. Awesome, awesome. What about you, Dr. Dan? Uh, I was 18 and I was about to train. I actually messaged uh, PWO and they, I forget what email, I wish I can go back and find it now who they sent me to. But I actually chickened out and never followed through, just like, you know, the typical stories that everyone's like, oh, you know, this guy asked about wrestling school, but he never followed through. And uh, it took me a couple of years. I uh, retired from rugby. I played that, uh, you know, for all Ohio teams across the country. And then I realized I always wanted to do something. I like physicality and uh, I needed something to get back in shape. So I picked professional wrestling and kind of just spiraled from there. Wow. So rugby is kind of a really physical sport. Um, did that kind of prepare you for the, 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 the impact kind of physicality of, of pro wrestling? It's actually a, a common misconception because rugby is actually a lot safer than your like normal American football mm -hmm. It's actually more controlled. Yeah. It's got no pads. And sometimes you take some hits like to the head or anything like that. But at the end of the day, it's actually like a safer game because no one's coming from your blind spot, but it is, it's pretty grueling, but it's not a, 
it's not as dangerous as you, like most people think. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So what, getting into it, uh, was there anything that kind of uh, caught you by surprise uh, in, in the training world? Um, honestly, I thought it would have been a lot more of the, like with AIW, it's not a, with the training school, it's like when Chandler and John and then Johnny and Candace were the, the head, like were like the mainstays. It goes, I thought it would have been a lot worse in like the, you know, you always see like the hazing and stuff like that. And like AIW is not like that. It's more of a come in, get your stuff done, work hard. And it goes, that was really what it was. There was no, nothing crazy or out of the ordinary about it, which I was happy with, but it goes, I know there's other places that are like that still, but it was, uh, it was, I'm very happy where I am now. That's awesome. What about you, Derek? I had like a barrage of people who helped train me, but it's just, you know, anybody, it's not ballet in there. You go out there, it's a wrestling <laughs> ring. That's awesome. It is, it is. Uh, coming in, in uh, uh, Derek, how, how long have you been wrestling? I, you're you're the, lo- the longer of the two. Yeah, I've been wrestling around like five years. Mm-hmm. And I know we've seen you, I've seen you in the area with uh, VOW for a bit. Uh, I think at the time teaming, uh, teaming with uh, Dylan Bostic. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, you, you've been an interesting story because, uh, you know, you were here, you know, did some stuff. And, you know, uh, after a while, I heard like like Derek Direction has kind of um, found his place uh, and, and check him out. And then seeing you pop up here and rise and everything. Can you talk about that journey a little bit and kind of where you're at now? Um. It's like it's a weird journey. So, I want to say when I first started and made my way the way to Pittsburgh, I was um, a little too cocky for my britches, or too big for my britches, and a little too cocky. Mm-hmm. And um, I sort of learned along the way that wrestling's supposed to be fun, and that's what I'm having right now. I'm having a lot of fun wrestling, and it seems to be doing just well for me, especially like with AIW and whatnot. That's awesome. And of course, uh, uh, part of the production, Magnum CK, I'm familiar with. I'm not ter- uh, terribly familiar with the rest of your uh, crew up there, but I, I, I know about every month when I hear there's an IEW show, usually I'm seeing social media about what the production has done this month. Yeah, so the group right now, it's me and Magnum, um, the leaders, Frankie Flynn, and we have a tag team of Donovan Danhausen, who's from Detroit, and another one of, um, originally he was trained with Ricky Shane Page, where I was trained. But he's like an AIW student now, Eddie only. So it's like us five, we're the production, and you know, we're just trying to plaster social media as much as we can. Uh, t- tell us a little bit for those that aren't familiar about like what you guys are doing up there. What's kind of the philosophy for you guys as a group uh, up there? So as of right now, it's a five man group, and we're um, it's originally was like theater driven. Mm-hmm. Because Frankie Flynn has uh, a degree in in the theater. theater, right? And as you know, Magnum CK is a uh, he he works in theater. Yeah, I think he so directs it, as well now, right? Yeah, it just fits. You know what I mean? So it's like we're theater guys. Um, it's sort of evolved for me where I'm like a skeezy director, and then like the other guy, we have a Dan, Donovan Danhausen's a writer, mm-hmm. which and realistically he does, and Eddie only is a stagehand because. In real life, he's a rock and roller, and he <laughs> is on the stage 90% of the time. So it sounds like we're going back to the attitude area idea of, of just turn up everything that everybody is in real life. Yeah, pretty exactly. much. Pretty much. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and speaking of Dr. Dan, I, I got it. So I, 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 I'm looking at the card, and, uh, and, I, and I, one of the first times I was at Rise Wrestling, and I heard about this uh, Dr. Dan guy, you know, and I'm like, what is this guy about? And there's a a a, a PowerPoint presentation, which yes. I've, we're, we're, we're big fans of PowerPoint presentations in professional wrestling here on this show when we were doing the 205 Live show. Uh, but also, I have had this pamphlet in my studio ever since that show, I believe, uh, which is, uh, for you guys on audio, Change Your Life, Rule Number One with Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham. Um, this is fantastic. You come out, you come out on one of those um, uh, hoverboard <laughs> deals that everybody hates these days. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, not exploding one, mind you. Not an exploding. This is this is verified. You you check the battery on it. This is not one of those like Chinese knockoffs. Nope, hundred percent real. Good, good. Safety in wrestling. First of all, tell me a little bit about like this getting to this point that you have. I don't listen. 
Most wrestlers don't have literature to accompany their gimmick like this. You're right. It goes. It's it's just kind of been an evolution of my character and also of me in wrestling. Like that's my third version of the pamphlet. First, I had uh, you know the principles of DCR: dedication, confidence, and respect. And uh, last year, I came out with my uh, new idea, which is rule number one, which is keep your eye on the ball. And the ball can literally be anything. It could be a goal. It could be a situation. It could be anything. As long as you focus on it or keep yourself aware, you there's nothing that can stop you. That's amazing. Uh, what's your response been to this uh, across the board? You know, I have, obviously, I've seen it rise uh, uh, to great effect. Um, I've had a situation from people th- ripping them up and throwing them at me. Um, <laughs> people have emailed the email on the back. Oh and- yeah, yeah. There okay. is there is a Daniel C. Rockingham, which without the period that looks like Crockingham, unfortunately, uh, at yahoo.com. One, you still have a Yahoo address. If that I does, do. If that doesn't make you a bad guy, uh, heel, I don't know what does. <laughs> um, I'm frugal. I understand the value of the dollar. I don't need to buy my own. If there's already an email account, I don't have to buy my own, you know, web service. And, and you've had it for a while because it's still Yahoo. Yes, sir. Yeah, obviously, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great uh so you guys again you're, you're two guys that have uh, uh lately uh, you know again i see everywhere on social media everybody's talking about you um um uh, kind of uh, you know uh you just came off of uh, i believe both of you are what aaw absolution correct yeah we were both on correct Awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, because I've been at one of those a few years ago. I believe it was uh, the, the year that they had the most expensive uh, eight-man tag ever. With, uh, <laughs> a ten-man tag. Ten man was, tag. Oh, a ten-man tag. That's right. It was more the expensive. The only time that will ever happen where you have a New Japan, Ring of Honor, uh, Lucha Underground, WWE, TNA, yeah. the superstars all under the same you know match yeah. at the same time. Not to mention people that were about to show up on NXT and tear it up like Johnny Gargano, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. And Joe was already signed. And Alex Daniels. And Daniels. And Alex Daniels. Daniels. Yeah, Alex Daniels. <laughs> he, he was kind of the poor odd man out on that, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, but uh, So how did AIW Absolution go this year? I, I've seen some great stuff from it. Uh, Dan has to go first. He had a really good Absolution story. His Absolution story is fantastic. <laughs> I, uh, the, 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 the scheduled match was Ethan Page versus Matthew Justice. Mm-hmm. Ethan Page finally understood my tutelage. I had been trying to explain to him this whole time. And uh, we had we were going ahead and both beating on Matt Justice. And uh, the siren hit. And uh, the fans all hollered and heard Scott Steiner. And next thing you know, I found myself in the midst of a tag match against Scott Steiner. <laughs> Amazing. How, how is Scott? Uh, terrifying, but also the best. That's great. <laughs> He was super intimidating. He had a black eye. He had a black eye when he walked in the door. And I'm like, uh, what? How Wait. he got the black eye? We have no idea. That's, yeah. Who, like, you don't want to see the guy that gives Scott Steiner the back black eye, right? Exactly. No, not at all. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, what about you, Derek? How was your absolution? I was pretty well. I, I think, not to toot my own horn, I had the most appearances on absolution this evening <laughs> or that evening. I, I, I appeared in a scramble match, mm-hmm. which I sadly lost, and um, I got beat up by Space Monkey. Oh! And then later in the evening, I managed Eddie Only and Donovan Danhausen against the Young Studs. And a little bit later from that, I managed Frankie Flynn and Magnum CK, and they picked up the tag team titles for the production. Nice, nice. I've been seeing a lot of that out there too. Um, they they beat up. Sorry to cut you off. They beat up your boy PB Smooth and. Hornswoggle. What? Yeah. So they, they <laughs> lost titles. Jeez. The, my, my favorite big little tag team on the indies right now. Over. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Uh, they didn't break up afterwards, did they? No. Good. I'm, no. Worried, I'm worried about what... Cute. I'm worried about what Swoggle would do to PB Smooth. Beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic uh you guys of course are are uh, um involved up here with uh, rise wrestling here and there um of course uh, derek you, you you're going to be as of this recording not by the time you guys hear this on release um involved this weekend you've been uh here uh i had some stuff with the title belt uh got yeah. out of lee moriarty's hands for a while uh tell me a little bit about working with this it's a newer promotion here in the greater pittsburgh area that you guys have been involved with 
So Brandon K is a uh, is a saint. I've met him when he was wrestling for PWX, and I had my uh, little cup of coffee in PWX. Brandon K, he reminds me of Jerry Lynn, so I always thought he was like the man. But um, <laughs> he started his own promotion, him with the help of Marcus Mann. And Marcus Mann's another guy that I just love to hate, but love him, like if that makes sense. So they brought me out to Pittsburgh, or brought me back to Pittsburgh, and I told him that I wanted to um, bring some of the AIW kids with me. And that's what led us here. Like, I don't know, Rise is a good platform for us that we think it's um, yeah. a good home of Pittsburgh. That's awesome. Uh, it, it, you know, there's a lot happening, I think, in both Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Um, it, it seems like both uh, areas are pretty much on the rise, no pun intended with a Y, uh, uh, as far as promotions are going these days. Uh, but, uh, you know, what, what is it, do you think, it, that's happening here with uh, both areas? Uh, is it just like, like the lo- local talent, or is it just kind of riding this indie wrestling um, uh, fever pitch lately? Um, personally, I think wrestling's at an all time high right now because there's just a whole bunch of new hungry talent rolling in and the new hungry talent is sort of pushing out the old talent. And I mean, no one likes change, Mm -hmm. but when you have a whole bunch of young guys that are hungry and willing to make drives and put in the work and train, I mean, it's just all for the best pro wrestling should be fun. If it's not fun, why are you doing it? Yeah, because it's. And there's a bunch of guys that are locally. Like if you look at the Cleveland area, you've got myself, Derek, Dominic Garini. You've got guys like that that are traveling, like trying to make their names. And just like with like Lee in Pittsburgh and, you know, the school over at IWC and the school at Rise with all those, you know, different wrestlers that are all actually out there trying to make a name for themselves. No matter how big or small the promotions they work for, they're still out there getting their reps. And, you know, if they're in front of five people or if you're in front of a paper, I pay-per-view crowd of th- thousands, it doesn't matter. As long as you're getting those reps in, eventually it'll it'll blow up, and you'll you'll you you're you get yourself prepared for the moment that you need it to be. Just be a good human being, and Just be it'll a good human. Pay off. That that has been a big thing. We talked about that a lot with um, Marcus and the guys that did stomp out cancer. Uh, a few weeks ago in, in this past month on the show like it seems like there's a big positivity move in indie wrestling especially yeah. in these areas that was always the uh johnny gargano rule at the school just be a good human and everything eventually works out for itself mm-hmm. definitely i mean like i just look at it like if you hate wrestling so much and if you're bitter for it, bitter to towards it what's it getting out of you it's nothing it's just gonna physically drain you mm-hmm. i mean it's Wrestling doesn't owe you a thing. You get as much out of it as you want, as you put into it. That's awesome. Um, so what are you What are you guys getting inspired about? Is there anything maybe that you're seeing on the indies or that you're seeing on TV that is uh, either inspiring your or has your attention that people should be looking out for? Um, if you're asking for a person, or probably I love Lee Moriarty. Lee needs to be everywhere. I'm trying to I every week I tell him, hey man, come on down to the IW school, like you know, or come on down like anywhere. Lee needs to wrestle everywhere. I can't put him over enough. Him and Duke Davis. Duke Davis is like fifty years old, but <laughs> he, he um he's the man. He he's actually I think he's he has to be seven foot tall. Mm. And he's just a, another good human being. Like those I love those two guys. Like I look forward to seeing them every month when I come to Pittsburgh. Even no matter how old Duke Davis is. <laughs> what about you, Dr. Dan? Um, if you're like, talking about like guys on the Indies that I'm looking at, it goes, I I know it sounds silly, but I look up, like, he's younger than me, but I look up to like, a guy like Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, who's absolutely oh. killing it where he's going. And, like, that's, like, one of the people that I, like, confide in and ask about for advice. And, yeah, it's, but he's also been wrestling longer than I have, even though he's much younger. It goes, it's just guys like that, like him and Ethan Page and, you know, guys with like Mance Warner, Mance, Mance Warner, Warner. Man, Mance is it's, another good. It's dude. just trying to find guys with like I really wanted to be Lucha Libre, AJ Styles, like jump off the top rope guy, but I've learned that there's a thousand guys that do it better than me, so I might as well make goofy faces and you know have fun with my character, and that's what I do best. So I just have to keep doing what I do. And as an aside on that, I, I, if people have not caught on the uh, MJF bandwagon. Uh, he's a part of Dojo Pro uh, that we've been mm-hmm. talking about recently on the show. Um, that's kind of my first big look at what MJF can do. 
Uh, so go find his episode at least and watch that. And you'll like between the interview and the match, you, you kind of get what the deal is with MJF. So a- another guy from Dojo Pro that I like that I uh, I'll throw out and I look up to is Kevin Koo. Yep, Kevin Koo is a good dude. Yep, and uh, down from down south, the Carnies. Too. Yeah, the Carnies as well. Nick Aggie and Carrie Awful. Yeah, other other great guys that have helped instrumental actually with you know, both of us. Me and Derek's growth in the past couple years. They taught us how to be marketable. If you look at a Carney's merchandise booth, they have everything from cozies to, I don't know, what's, they had book ba- They were selling book bags last time I saw it. Really? Coffee mugs. Yeah. Jeez. It seems like merchandising is the, uh, the, the conversation of the day here uh, when we've been uh, talking, talking to a lot of guys in the last just two days of our interview recordings. Um, so what are you guys, uh, what, what's the uh, best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you guys so far in your careers? Uh, the best thing about indie wrestling for me is just, I don't know, seeing everyone have fun. That's, yeah. that's great. I like, I set little, uh, little goals for myself and when I accomplish them, it's the best. The worst, I don't even, what's the worst? I think I was at, I honestly can't pick anything for worst because it's like the camaraderie and all that. Cause like you could say the time in the car is the worst or you could say this or that, but that's where you get your camaraderie with all your, all your, you know, the people you travel with, and that's like the best part about it is because you can go from place to place with a handful or one person, or it just depends yeah. on. That's yeah. The, yeah, the best. I think camaraderie. Yeah, Com- Com- camaraderie. camaraderie. I listen to Doctor Dan sing all the words to every Lonely Island song. It's Ooh. probably hilarious. Or or Doctor Dan giving me shit for putting ketchup on mozzarella sticks. Yeah, like our buffalo sauce. Like what? I'm really white trash, so I use um, ketchup on my sales picks. <laughs> this is great. What's your favorite Lonely Iron Island song, uh, Dr. Dan? Um, I'm on a boat is always the classic. Of course. Because that was – but uh, Lazy Sunday one because I actually remember when that was like the first viral video. It's Because like, I was like that's right when I started like actually watching SNL. And I was like, you know what? This is awesome. And nothing can ever top the best one, the first one. That's awesome. Hey guys, uh, where can people typically find you? What groups are you usually working with? And uh, it, where can people find you online to find out uh, where, where you're ending up and when? Um, for me, I am usually found at Alpha One Wrestling in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they've just expanded with a couple different places in uh, Colborne and uh, Oshawa as well. So those are three different cities they work. AIW, um, Mega Championship Wrestling, UXWA in Cleveland, at times CWF Mid Atlantic, goes to Robbie. Uh, Matter Vintage Wrestling. He goes. I've, I'm all, I always joke that I've and I've wrestled for like Punk Pro in Orlando, and then all the way over to PWCS in St. Louis. So that's about my triangle of places and uh, nice. Southern Underground Pro as well. Nice, nice. And online uh, at Dancy Rockingham on Twitter. And uh, my email, Daniel C. Rockingham at yahoo.com. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I got to get that right here for you guys on video. Right there, like on the back of your you screen cap this. There you go. I might scan this to post with the uh, podcast. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Derek? <laughs> um, obviously, Absolute Intense Wrestling in Cleveland. I wrestle for Mega Championship Wrestling in Elyria, Ohio. Or Mega Wrestling. Yeah. Um, I wrestle for obviously Rise Wrestling in Pittsburgh or Lamont Furnace, whatever you want to call it. Um, Black Label Pro in Indiana, which is a really big promotion that's on the rise. Um, and Southern Underground Pro in Tennessee. Jeez. And I'm just trying to make the rounds, you know. We wrestled a freelance not too long ago. Yeah. Well, we always joke that if, if it's within eight hours on a Sunday, we'll go to it and do it. <laughs> Apparently. That's awesome. I, I didn't know how, how widespread you guys were getting out there, and that's good to see. Um, I'll, I, oh, and online? Oh, um, Derek underscore Direction. Some weirdo has Derek on Twitter. Some weirdo has Derek Direction, and they just post nothing but One Direction, like Aww. lyrics. Yeah. Aww. I'm that's sorry. Old, man. I don't know what it is. It's I'm terrible. Sorry. So it's Twitter backslash Derek underscore Direction. And that's my pro wrestling tease username, too. So I have a lot of shirts. Get it out there. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, looking forward to as of this recording again. I, I know I'm going to see you, Derek, this weekend at uh, 
Rise Wrestling. Please check out all that stuff, and you can uh, look these guys up over at Indie Wrestling. Dot US and Smart Mark Video as well for the AIW stuff. And uh, I'm sure half those promotions are up there as well. Uh, so thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat room live. Again, check out the events over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show and IndieWrestling.us Facebook pages to see what interviews may be coming up. And until next time, please support indie wrestling and self help gurus. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.